This is really going to be a mystery today because a week ago we went in and I put this Honey Super on here and it had a lot of wax moth on it. It was wax moths that had gotten onto an empty box, no drawn frame, but they got all on the wood. Now, we want to see after a week, have the bees cleaned it up and have they added any more wax to build it out? Some people say that if there's wax moth damage or wax moth have been on the, that, those frames, the bees just ignore it. These frames I didn't add any wax to. I wanted to see what could the bees do if you gave them, as you can see here in this image, just kind of a messed up uh, super frame full of wax moth cocoons. And one commenter said they don't know if they could have carried the wax moth through this queen excluder, uh, the wax moth uh, cocoons. And that's a good point. Now I think bees could, but we're gonna open this up, see what they've done in seven days. It's gonna be a mystery, let's get started. Okay, so the last time we were in here, a little over a week ago, eight days exactly, I was here on May the 4th. So now it's May the 12th. What do they do on that honey super? Oh, yeah, let's see. I'm gonna set this down. All right. Ooh, I see some just fresh wax on this honey super up here near, near the wall. But let's skip this and go take this off because I want to destroy my back again. It looks like it's almost capped over, ready for harvest. Wow, that's insane. They might have done really good down below if this one's full. These things weigh about 50 to 60 pounds full, a medium super. I think that's about approximately right. Maybe more actually, yeah. A good 50, anywhere from 50 to 70 pounds. And there's just no fun way to pick these things up, is it? Ah. All right. I should make some, overlay some bone popping noise right there. Okay, not impressed. Not impressed. I thought it would all be cleaned up. I thought it would all be drawn out. But it's only been eight, di eight days. All right, so what are we gonna see here? Let's start over here with this one. I was hoping they could just clean this up, pull that wax out, and I wouldn't have to do it. Look at that. Zilcho! And they need this. All right, let's keep looking. We gotta go to the middle to see. That's usually where they'll start. So, this may prove a point that you really need to get all the <laughs> all this cleaned up yourself and wax these frames. Nothing. Haven't even so much as touched them. Keep looking. All right, we, I see something going on on this one. See what we got. Not, uh, nothing on that one. Oh, this middle one was one I put in there that was not wax damaged. Remember that? I needed one more frame, I said, and I ran and grabbed this one with no wax moth damage. And look at that. They've already started drawing it out nicely. Wow, did we settle a myth. Wow. So bees don't like... Um, these frames that have had wax moth damage, the presence of wax moth on them. Yeah, I'm just not seeing any wax at all. So what we're gonna do here is take this one off and coat these with wax and give it back to them. An important discovery is that bees don't like frames that have had wax moth damage done to them. I've always been promoting about adding wax to frames, but what I've always wondered is how much of the wax, the extra wax that I put on my foundation, plastic frames, how much of that do they actually use? And I've been having a hard time figuring out a way to actually do a study to figure that out. I've finally decided how I'm gonna do it, and I think it's gonna work out pretty good. I'm gonna show you today how we're gonna solve that mystery, because think about it. If you add wax to the frames, and the bees use all of the wax that you added, the extra wax, that means the bees don't have to use, they don't have to metabolize all that nectar or honey in order to make wax 
to fill out those frames. And that would allow them to use the nectar that they're bringing in instead of using it for wax production, they can store it and make you more honey. But we won't really know if that's the case until we do this study. What we're gonna do today, two things. We're gonna clean this up, get all the cocoons off, and then we're gonna coat it with this red wax that I got. Traditional way of adding wax to the foundation by, I'm gonna use a roller this time. You wanna watch that. Roll it on with a roller, see if that works. And then we're gonna test it in the hive to see when they draw it out, is it gonna be red comb all the way out to the tip of the edge? Or is it gonna be just a little bit of red uh, comb cells and the rest of it is white, meaning they added all that themselves. So here we go over to the wax melter. If you've been a part of my channel for a while, you've gotta love my wax melter. I think I bought it at you know Walmart or somewhere for 50 bucks. And it's, this, it's filthy, it's got wax all over it, it's gross but it works, it gets the job done. So I got all the wax out that is normal color wax, and now I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna put these red sheets in here. What I'm hoping is that the red sheets, um, when it melts, it'll still be red when I put it on the hive, uh, put it on the frame. So let's get a sheet in there. I don't, oh, they're blowing away. Here comes a tornado. Now you get to know where I live. I, li I told you I lived in the prairie. You can't even walk outside without getting blown away. Now you know what my bees go through in the winter time. <laughs> in order to clean these frames up, we're gonna cl clean off all these cocoons like this. And so just scraping it off. And if you wanna really be good at this, you gotta go fast. Otherwise it's gonna take too long. Well, we worked hard and fast and got all the frames cleaned up nicely of all the wax moth cocoons and everything. So now we're gonna put the magical red uh, wax on here so we can do our little study. Now, if you look at this wax here, I like it to get a little cool. Now I've turned the heat off and I'm waiting for it to get a little tacky on the top because it's gonna go on these frames a lot better if the wax is a little bit cooled down and it's still pretty warm. And today we're gonna to be using a roller. I think this might really work well or it may be disastrous, but I got this idea of just, you know, once this cools down, I wanna get all this waxy and just roll it on there. I think it should work really well. So let's get our roller. Ooh, I'm glad it's so red. I was worried that the red would be lost. All right, here we go. Let that drain off good. First time to use a roller. Man, that is, that might be great. Let's try it. Oh my gosh. Oh, brilliant. Ouch, got some on my finger. Wow, I'm loving it, people. My gosh, I picked this up at the Dollar General store. Oh wow, look at that. That is just perfect. Wow. Okay, so back to what we're doing. We're doing an experiment to see if bees will actually use all of this red wax or does it just motivate them to draw out the wax frames or the foundation faster? Do they use it or does it motivate them to just go about it faster? Okay, everybody's gonna be asking me this question. How much do I put on there? How do I know? How thick? Do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> do it like I did it. I don't know. Just take a piece of foundation like this, plastic foundation, get your roller going. Wow, I can't believe all those years I used a, a brush when I could have been rolling it on. You guys leave some comments below. Let me know what you think about how soon the bees will draw out uh, these foundations once we cleaned them up we waxed them. Now, on that uh, hive out there that we, that we looked at, we actually uh, bottom supered. We actually put the super on the bottom. And you know what? Honestly, I've never been real pleased with bottom supering. I always had better luck top supering. So I think when I put it back on the hive, I'm gonna top super and uh, see if they'll draw this out. And uh, wow, look at that, that's great, isn't it? Okay, so our study is gonna be 
will this comb that they draw out, will it be completely red or, whoops, it's going everywhere, or will it be partially red and the outer part of the cells actually be more um, white from their, from their wax glands? It's going to be put that mystery to rest, aren't we? Yeah. We're about out of wax. That took a lot of sheets. That was 10 sheets of wax. And there's no reason for you guys to do this. Um, you might be wondering, hey, where can I buy some red wax? Unless you just want to do the experiment yourself. I wouldn't recommend, you know, using this um, in a hive. It's probably red dye. It's kind of made for candles. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to eat honey out of this. Um, I don't know if it would hurt you, but it doesn't sound like, some people are really against red dye. All right, let's put a little log in the fire to keep her going here. She's starting to really get tacky on top. Wow, look at that. The tackier this wax gets, it's gonna really go on thick. Can you get a close up of that, Patrick? Ooh, wow, that doesn't go on smooth at all, does it? So you don't want it to cool down too much. I wanna thank Pat for helping me film today. Pat, uh, join the team of the Beak Squad team members helping me and my video productions and all, and he volunteered to do some filming and I uh, appreciate it a lot. Wow, that's a mess, look at that. You learn as you go, don't you? Yep, that is a mess. So we're getting ready to put this back on the hive over there. So let's see, just for your benefit, what we got here. Undrawn foundation, no wax coating. No wax coating. Red, pretty thick. Red, clumpy thick. This one, no, no color, but it is wax coated in the middle. And we have red, really a lot of red there. And then we should have this one red and that should be the end of our reds. Yep. But I think I'm gonna change one more thing just for the test. Uh, in the middle, let's put in one of the undrawn ones. Because that way we can see, oh look, bees don't really draw out the ones without extra wax on them. We'll put this one back here against the wall. That'd be good. All right. So I wanna just put a sticker on here in case we get a little confused about the date. Um, let's put a sticker right here. That'd be what uh, date we did all this work. So put that on there. The bees should leave that alone. It is May the 12th, Mother's Day 24. So that way I hope to come back in about eight days to see what they've done. Now I might be rushing it. Eight days may not be long enough, but we'll see. So what we're gonna do now is go back over. We're gonna to top super this on the top and I'm kind of debating taking the queen excluder off. I think I'm ready to take my queen excluder off because the super that's gonna be next to the brood nest area is like 90% nectar and honey. So the queen can't really do anything up there. So now that super, the one that I'm gonna leave on the hive all the time is gonna be their queen excluder and then the bees can go up and start working this one. So I'm thinking the bees will realize, hey, we're full, no queen excluder, let's go up and get this top one pulled out. Let's go over there and set her up. All right, let's get the job done. We're gonna put the super on top, but we gotta take the queen excluder off. So we gotta do a little bit of work here out of the ordinary. Put the deep box here to keep me a little higher off the ground. All right, a little smoke under there. Queen excluder. There we go. Oh, that's a heavy super again. Ah, make sure it's stable. It is. Let's remove the queen excluder. Let's see if we can smoke any bees off of there. Smoker is almost out of gas for the day. <laughs> I 
And they're airborne. All right. There's the queen excluder. We're gonna put the super on. That was a good landing. It almost was perfect. Now we're gonna put the super on in question that we're running our experiment on. Look at that. All right. You wanna get a close up of this, Patrick? I think just like to show everyone that here it is. Took our queen of scooter off. Bees are already coming up a little bit onto here. Look at that. Let's see how they like red. <laughs> you know, they, they don't have a, uh, a real good, they're not really able to see red or red light that much. So <laughs> see how they like red wax. Wonder if anybody's ever done a multicolor wax experiment. Well, we're about to do red experiment. I'm looking forward to what this experiment is going to reveal. So be sure and subscribe so you'll be notified each time I make a new video because in eight days I'm going to be making a video about how they like red frames in there and that works or not. So it'll be a good video for you guys to check out. If you're stopping in my channel for the first time, you're interested in beekeeping, I made a great video on how to start beekeeping. I made it several years ago, but how to start, still the same. Check it out right here. You may want to start becoming a beekeeper. See you over there.